Today we're visiting with uh, resident Princess Virginia Hoppus, a young 96-year-old woman who may not say that she's 96 when you ask her. She might say she's 28 because she was born in leap year. Virginia's been a resident of, of the Epworth camps, campus since uh, 2013. She moved into a cottage where she lived for several years. Most recently, she has been moved to in, into our assisted living section. So I think when you hear and you see her, you'll understand why I refer to her as Princess. Virginia has written several children's books. I call them children's books because they are primarily for children. They're very creative and uh, very informative and educational as well. But I've read a few of them and they're very uplifting. So if you're having kind of a dull day, it would put a smile on your face if you read one of her books. Also, she has been a strong advocate of education all of her life, and she was instrumental in getting the scholarship program uh, instituted here at Epworth Villa. It's a scholarship program for our employees, and over the years since it started in 2007, several thousands of dollars have been uh, gifted to our employees to, to go to uh, college. So now it's time to hear from uh, our very smart princess, Virginia. So let's start our conversation with her. Virginia, where were you born and uh, where did you spend your early years? I was born in Kansas City, Missouri, and uh, we lived real near the state line, the Kansas, Missouri line. We lived near the uh, Country Club Plaza. That was a famous uh, a shopping center, kind of the first of its kind in the United States. And uh, we love that. <laughs> well, um, I know you uh, attended uh, junior college in mm -hmm. Kansas, and then and then what? Uh, KU after that. Mm -hmm. And what did you study? Uh, I didn't know what to study. <laughs> I kind of thought I'd be a teacher, but the girls told me, oh, that's so boring. <laughs> and uh, so I just kind of signed up for a general uh, thing. All I want to do is get married and have kids, I thought. And I didn't, wasn't very career-minded. But about that time, it was during the war, and they were advertising for student nurses. They had a student nurse corps. And they paid all our expenses and gave us uniforms and uh, books, all our living expenses, and uh, bought our shoes even, and shoes were hard to get. And uh, we strutted around in a special little uniforms. Most people didn't know what we represented, but we did get all our education paid for. Well, and you, you said to uh, me, uh, that uh, it, this was around the time of the polio epidemic, too. Yes, well, that was what I was in nurse training, yes. And uh, my first assignment was to go out on the polio <laughs> ward. And uh, I can just remember how hot it was. This was before air conditioning. And we had our new uniforms on, which were stiff. And those uniforms were something else there. Uh, where it was a long dress that went to the floor, and then on top of that there was a bib and an apron and a cap and cuffs, and um, we had all that to wear. And then we went into this room with the polio patients, and they were having this Sister Kenny treatment where they use hot blankets and uh, put over the patients. And I, I just remember how hot it was. And uh, yes, we And there were iron lungs? There was iron too. lungs, yes. And uh, most of the patients were there pretty long term. So we got pretty well acquainted with them. <laughs> right. Well, it was a hard time for sure. So it was kind of interesting the way you met your husband. <laughs> and uh, so it was one of your roommates or schoolmates? Uh, brothers. Well, it is in nursing training. Uh, uh, we, we lived together in a dorm. Uh, There's four of us in a suite. And uh, the other three all had boyfriends, but I didn't seem to have any. So my, uh, 
one of the girls uh, said, well, her brother was over in the South Pacific. He'd just gotten there, and he was bored to death. And uh, he thought, maybe uh, wondered if I'd write a letter to him. And I said, yes. So he answered it, and I wrote back. And we wrote back and forth for three years. <laughs> and then I and met then, him. <laughs> and when he finally came home? I just thought he was Mr. Wonderful. <laughs> and you got married. <laughs> yes, I sure do. He sure did. All right. In the 50s, 1950s, you say that you moved to Tulsa, mm -hmm. Oklahoma. Yeah, my husband had a job okay. in the oil fields. So. Yes. And you lived there for how many years? 53. Uh -huh. Okay. In yeah. the same house. In the, <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, and uh, I know you raised some children. A lot of them. <laughs> so tell them. me about your children. Well, I'm very proud of them. <laughs> and how many children? Uh, five. Well, that's wonderful. And so how many grandchildren and great-grandchildren have you? I had 11 uh, grandchildren, and that included two that were adopted from Guatemala. You told me that uh, your church life was uh, extremely important to you. Well, yes, it was. Uh, so tell us about that. Uh, well, my grandfather was in the Civil War. He was on the north side, on the south side, very proud of being. Uh, he was born in Kentucky, and uh, I guess when he was just a teenager, the Yankees came and ran over his farm and t took their belongings. And uh, he was put in a northern prison for a while, too. So uh, uh, he, when he was on this, he, when he was working in the Southern Army, he kind of uh, presented himself as a chaplain, I think. I don't think he had any formal training, but he was a chaplain. And then later he got to be a circuit rider, kind of like the statue of John Wesley. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was a Methodist preacher, and all I remember, I remember he had a long beard. He, when he wanted to kiss me, I just wanted to go hide. <laughs> I didn't like that much. And then, well, my uh, mother and father were very active in the Westport Methodist Church, and uh, that had sort of unique, it was built in, 1863, and during the Civil War, it served as a hospital. It was right on one of the battlegrounds, is the Battle of Westport, and that church was on what had been the battlegrounds, and so they brought the soldiers from both north and south sides to the church, and they'd lay them on the pews, and women from both both southern and and northern women would come and nurse them. Nursing, nursing uh, them? I thought that was rather unique. Yes, uh -huh. Indeed, it is. Uh -huh. And so have you been active in the church? Yes, uh -huh. Okay. Well, Sunday school, uh, uh, Bible right. school. Okay, and, and I s assume that's been, you know, all of your adult uh -huh. life. Uh, yes. Uh -huh. Okay. So um, you took care of your mother yes. for uh -huh. a long time. Yes. And while you were taking care of your mother, you started writing? Yes. <laughs> so tell us about that. Well, it wasn't so much. I mean, I just was at home most of the time and uh, didn't want to lead her very much. And so I just had time to... <laughs> time on your hands. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, I, Was that was not when you started writing the children's books, though. You were doing a different kind of writing. Well... I, I started one book that got published that time, and then, and then the children's books I wrote here. Okay. Well, and you, uh, you were very instrumental in starting the scholarship program for our employees here at Epworth Villa. That mm -hmm. occurred in uh, 2007, mm -hmm. but you, it's kind of an interesting story. You said the way that uh, motivated you to do that with uh, a uh, housekeeper? Well, yes, well, the cleaning women came in. I just got got to visiting with her and uh, asking her uh, about her life, and she wanted to be a dietitian, but uh, didn't have the money to go to school, and so that kind of <laughs> the uh, CEO at that time he was, he really was the one that started it. I mean, I had just written a paper for my writing class and sent it to him about this, mm -hmm. and he, uh, I didn't do much actual work with it. Well. Um, I know that uh, you were certainly 
um, instrumental in in uh, part of part of a group that got it started here, mm -hmm. and so it's been and going strong. Yes, and yes. Uh, several thousand dollars have been awarded to our employees during mm -hmm. that time. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and you've served on the scholarship committee for many years yes. as well. Well, besides yes. writing, then. Um, what are you participating in here at Epworth? Are you doing um that much? <laughs> you know, when we're quarantined in here we Yeah, well it does uh -huh. it does make a difference. Uh, but but uh, I know you're you're part of the writing group that meets Well um, we don't I can't even write Well right now I guess you can't you can't go, but you have been yeah. uh -huh. a delightful um person in the writing group because you read read your books. <laughs> so it'll be nice when you, the writing group is meeting, Yeah. Uh, and soon we hope that you will be able to enjoy them. Mm -hmm. you know. One thing I do enjoy, my uh, when my daughters set up that Zoom system, uh, conference calls and every Saturday, the whole bunch of us uh, get together, and well, we don't get together, <laughs> we're just on TV, and uh, it's just so nice to be able to see my kids and how, yeah. how they're changing, and right. my uh, sister-in-law's in the hospital, and we could see her too, just uh, how she was doing and all. And, I thought that was such a wonderful technology and how the camera knows when you're talking and will uh, put the camera on the right person, they just recognize the voice. And yes. Well, we have, we have part of our production team for these interviews are, are very adept at doing that too. I'm not one of them, but we're, we're grateful for, you know, our producer and our director and our camera crew and and it's been kind of a joy to have uh, yeah. interviews with the residents here and you have uh, enchanted us with uh, your wonderful story. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you Virginia for sharing your personal story with us. It's It's been absolutely enchanting and uh, we are really blessed to have you here at Epworth as a neighbor. <laughs>